Mark chapter 6. This, you already got it. Look at verse 30. Okay, I'm going to read it. Check it out. This is Jesus feeding the 5,000. I want you to take, take it a second and put yourselves in the shoes of the disciples for a minute. Okay. And the apostles gathered to Jesus and told him all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. And he said to them, come aside by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. So he said rest a while. Okay, cool. For there were many coming and going, and they did not even have time to eat. So they departed to a deserted place in the boat by themselves, but the multitude saw them departing, and many knew him, and ran there on foot from all the cities. They arrived before them and came together to him. So these people saw Jesus departing. It's like, he's going that way. They took off running and beat him there. Uh, Amen. I want you guys to run to Jesus. Amen. We can all get together and run. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Okay. And look at verse 34. It says here, um, and Jesus, when he came out, saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion for them because they were like sheep not having the shepherd. So he began to teach them many things. That's Jesus, amen? amen. Jesus is your wisdom, amen? At any point when you feel lost, you can consult Christ for wisdom. It just, I just say, Lord, Jesus, be my wisdom. And allow him to speak into your mind, because he will. He'll tell you what to do. He does it all the time. Okay, verse 35. When the day was now far spent, his disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and already the hour is late. Send them away, that they may go into the surrounding countries and villages and buy themselves bread, for they have nothing to eat. But Jesus answered and said to them, You give them something to eat. Think about it. Okay, we're all Christians in this building, right? We all love the Lord, right? Amen. You give the world, give people, Something to eat. Amen. You're believers. I mean, you can feed people just by inviting them to church. Amen. Amen. You have what it takes to say, hey, come check out, come check out my church. Come check it out. Amen. You know, and of course, a lot of the world already has a bad picture of church. So just let them know, hey, well, it's a calm, cool, laid back ministry. Everyone's chill. You tell them you won't be judged. Don't know that ahead of time. Yeah, that's the person that's like, I don't judge or nothing, right? You know how it is, right? Amen. But you give them something to eat, right? Okay, check it out. Jesus answered and said to them, You give them something to eat. And they said to him, Shall we go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give them something to eat? Interesting, right? People think that Jesus, while he was on earth, was poor. There's a scripture in the Bible that says the Son of Man had nowhere or no place to, to rest his head. So a lot of people have studied those scriptures thinking that Jesus was poor. He had, he had no place to stay. They had no money. You know, which is completely untrue. Because the disciples are about to go into the city right. and buy food for 5,000 people. Right. That's a lot of money. Yeah. Amen? So obviously, Jesus and the disciples were not poor. They weren't in lack. They weren't walking around like, like a bunch of nobodies on the street. Yeah. Of course, God was supplying and meeting all their needs. Right. Jesus was full of grace, y'all. He was very prosperous. He's so full of grace, he let a crazy man like Judas take care of his money. <laughs> right? And Judas was the one that betrayed him for 30 pieces of silver. Come on. He was a thief. Yep. Who lets the thief over the treasure? <laughs> Jesus did us. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus is amazing, right? Yeah. He's so nice. <laughs> like, well, you know, I just murdered seven people. Great, we're going to fill this ministry. You know what I'm saying? You're full of grace. Right? That, that bothers the heck out of people, though. Yeah. People don't want people who did bad things to be in good positions. Oh, right. 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 And this is completely off the subject, but it actually, no, it's not. I was watching Batman yesterday, the, the second one, The Dark Knight. And Joker's crazy, right? So he takes these people, puts one on a ferry, one another ferry. One of them is full of, of, of people that have been in jail, who have robbed and killed and stole. Yep. And they were in jail. One was of some noble people, so to speak, who had not made bad choices and had not done bad things, right? And we got the citizens who have done good things on one boat, and we got the people who've been in jail for years on another boat. Joker says, I got two detonators on both of these boats, and at any point, by a certain time, if one of you doesn't press the button and destroy the other boat, I'm going to blow you both up at this time. Right? And so everybody on the good boat who made good decisions stood up and were like, 
Well, obviously, we need to blow up that boat. They've had their chance. They've lived the life the way they live. They've been stealing. They've been in jail. They don't deserve to live. So we, being good people, I have children. I have children. I have children on this boat right now. So they were ready to blow up the, the boat over there. Now, it's interesting. The dude from Friday, Debo, played, um, the dude I'm talking about. Yeah. Big black dude. Yeah. Huge guy. He stands up. He was like, I'm going to do what y'all afraid to do. Give me that detonator. And the, the, the people, who, the, all the officers and police, and just kind of gave it to him. He takes it, walks over, and we're all thinking he's going to press the button and blow all the people up so they can live. No, he threw it out the window. Amen? Amen. The Bible says to those who are forgiven much, Come on. love much. Yeah. 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 Amen? Yeah. Yeah. Not those who love him love more. No, those who are loved by him love more. Right, right, yes. right. Those who are forgiven right. love even that much more. Yes, it's amazing. Amen? Beautiful picture of the love of God. Amen? we got the nobles who've done all the right things ready to blow up the people who need forgiveness. Mm. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Crazy, right? But, but for us today, when Christ comes to us, he just wants us to rest. He says, you know, give. Give. You have the ability to bring people to church. I can invite them until I turn blue in the face. But they'll come if you invite them. Right. The pastor doesn't invite people. Like that pastor's weird. He invited me to his church. No, but you can invite your friends. Amen. 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 But a lot of times, you know, but, but, but people struggle with seeing bad people get in good positions. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. The Bible says that we are the salt of the earth. Yes. Amen. Yes. Our job is to make them thirsty. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hey. Here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Invite the church. Get, get, yeah. get, get the bad people in here. Call them back. Get them in here. Let God restore them. Amen. Yeah. Let God heal them. Right. So he says, feed them. Check it out. Verse thirty-seven. When he answered and said to them, um, "You give them something to eat," and they said to him, "Shall we go and buy?" Blah blah blah. Verse thirty-eight. Check it out. But he said to them, "How many loaves do you have? Go and see." And when they found out, they said, five and two fish." Really interesting, right? Okay, but he commanded them to make them all sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in ranks in hundreds and in fifties. And when he had taken the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven, blessed, and broke the loaves and gave them to his disciples um, to set before them. And the two fish he had divided among them all. So they all ate and were filled, and they took up twelve baskets full of fragments and of the fish. Now those who had eaten the loaves were about five thousand men. Hmm. So, five loaves, two fish, somehow fed 5,000 people and had 12 baskets left over. That's just a minute. Yeah. I mean, that is, that right there, so that, that will renew your mind, right? Yeah. My point is, is I want you to see this picture of you as the disciples. And Jesus says to you, go and feed the people. And you say to yourself, naturally, as human beings, we think, okay, I have to go spend money. I have to go do this, and you start thinking of natural resources. Jesus says, how many loaves do you have? Church, how many loaves do you have? What do you got? What little do you have? How much do you have? Amen? Think about it. Did, did, did Christ depend on the disciples to feed those people? No. no. Technically, who fed them? Jesus. But who was the vessel? The disciples. Amen? I'm trying to get you to see, church, that you don't have to worry or fear about how you're going to be healed, about how you're going to be prospered, because you're the vessel. It's Jesus who performs the miracle, not you. Yes. Amen. Amen. You don't have to, to lean on yourself for anything. All you have to do is rest and trust that Jesus will meet your need and take what you have, give it, and watch Christ meet the need. He performs the miracle, not you. And check this out. None of those people did anything good to deserve to be fed. It was Jesus by his grace that took five loaves, which are, what was the number five in, in the Hebrew calendar? Five is grace. Five means grace. Amen? Think about this, church. Jesus supplies your needs according to his riches and glory. Not your riches. That's his grace. That, that's his ability, his love for you that causes him to be the giver and the blesser that he is. Amen? Therefore, we as believers don't have to look at what we give as a sacrifice because God who gave you the ability to give will supply and bless what you've given. Amen? Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen, yes. church? Yes. Pretty amazing. <laughs> now check this out. Go to John chapter 6. It's the same story in the book of John. When you get it, just say Amen. Right. 
Everyone see it? One verse. John chapter 6. Um, it's the same story. And I want let's, let's, let's go ahead and look down at verse 8. Everybody see it? Okay. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fish. So they got this, the loaves and the fish from some little kid, which is nice. Um, yeah. And then Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in numbers about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves. When he had what? Given thanks, he distributed them to the disciples and the disciples uh, to those sitting down. Right? Then it multiplied. Right? After Jesus what? After he gave thanks. Now there's something that you have to notice here. The word give, uh, given thanks in the Greek is charisteo. Okay? Remember the word gift and the word give. But the word gift is the word uh, charisma. Amen? Okay? And the word grace in the Greek is charis. So a gift is charisma. So grace, gift. Grace in the word, the word grace is the root to the word gift. So, take a look at what this is a picture of. Jesus was actually taking communion, amen, when he broke the bread and gave thanks. Yeah. Amen? amen? Because all of the blessings flow through the seed of Abraham. Who was that seed? Jesus. Right. Amen? But the blessing doesn't flow until the faith is activated. Yeah. Amen? Now you gotta really like catch it. Let's take it in baby steps, right? So the need is there, right? The need's already met, but the believer, you and I have not received the met need. Okay? So what happens here? How do we get our need met? Is we access the blesser, Jesus, the one who has already blessed you. Okay? You have faith, take what you have, give it to Christ. He gives thanks, and the blessing comes. Mm. Amen? Charisma. The gift is free. It's a grace gift. The giving comes from the grace of Jesus. Amen? The blessings are all benefits of God's grace towards you. So, clear your mind from this idea that if I don't do the right thing, I won't be blessed. No, the blessing's a gift, and a gift is something that you cannot earn. A gift is free. If you have to do something for a gift, it's not a gift. You earn something. It's more like wages. But a gift is free. If anyone gives you anything, you have to do things to receive the thing they're giving you. It's not a gift. Amen. A gift Amen. is what? Free. Amen. Therefore, Jesus' right and ability to bless you are all wrapped in charisma. Grace gift. Gift. Grace. Amen. Check it out. And whenever you take communion, you're, you're activating your faith. Amen? You're believing and activating the blesser. Jesus. Communion is a picture of Christ and what he did for you. So Jesus is showing you that I am taking this bread as a picture of his body that was going to be broken to feed everyone who believes. Amen? Yes. yes. Amen? I mean, think about it. What did God you serve, right? Amen? Oh, I'm thinking to myself, did I break that down good enough? I'm trying to really figure this out, right? Look at the stories. He takes what he takes what you have. What do you have? You don't have much. Amen? Especially when the earth is the Lord's in all its fullness. Amen? How much more can you trust with what little you have to the one who owns a cattle on a thousand hills? Amen? How much more can you trust the one who owns everything? To bless you. So take what little you have, your five loaves and your two fish. Amen? And give it. Amen? Give it. And watch God multiply. God needs the need. It's Him who blesses, not you. You never have to fear if God's going to heal. If you pray for somebody, well, God healed it. My spiritual mother, no. Who's healing? God's doing the healing. You believe. Amen. Never, never be afraid to take a step of faith. Amen? Your faith is in the one who can't. Yeah. Not in you who can't. Yes. But in the one who can. Amen. 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 Never fear when you're when you're at night and you're right. sleeping and the devil wants to put a spirit of fear in your bedroom. Come against that in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come against that because the one who is for you, no one can be against Jesus. Amen. 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 Move that to the church. Amen. Amen.